Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by two famous Bristol Myers products, Vitalis and Sal Hepatica. Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis, Sal Hepatica. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. The case of Baby, Cradle, and All. Our story opens tonight on the Lancaster estate in the suburb of your district attorney city. At the front door, Mrs. Lancaster is just getting out of her lawyer's car. Time for a drink, Walter? They'll be icing things on the terrace. Oh, I can't, Mae. Got to get back to town. Oh, I wish you'd change your mind. Oh, I can't, really. Hey, isn't that Drew on the terrace? Why, why yes, it is. That's strange. He said he was lunching in town with some friends of his from college. Drew? Oh, Drew, dear. If you ask me, your son's busy. Busy? Who's the girl? I don't know. That's what I meant by busy. Well, I'll phone you when I want those tax reports signed, man. Yes, Walter, do. Mother, I... I thought you were in town. And I thought you were. Oh, what a shame. I told Julia there'd be no luncheon. Uh, yeah, she told me. Walter have to leave? Yes. He's busy in town. I didn't know you were having a guest. Oh, I'm not. I, I mean, Laurie and I just drove out. She uh, wanted to see the house. Really, dear, you might have said... Laurie? Lorelei Ross. Lorelei? Uh, come on, I'll introduce you. Ross. I don't remember you ever saying... Drew, wait a minute. Hope I didn't scare Walter away. Oh, Mother... Uh, Miss Ross, Laurie, this is my mother. Miss Ross. Swell to meet you, Mrs. Lancaster. Thank you, my dear. Oh, do sit down. Uh, drink, lady? It's rum. Thank you, Drew. This uh, sure is a beautiful place, Mrs. Lancaster. Just like something in the movies. Uh, I was telling Laurie about your archery, mother. She got quite a kick out of it. Really? I'll say I did. I never shot a bow and arrow. Never really had to. I do it for exercise, mostly. Oh, yes, I understand. You aren't having lunch with your friends from school, Drew? Uh, no, Mother, no, I'm not. It's a shame, Miss Roth. If it weren't so late, I'd insist you stay and have luncheon here with us. Oh, sure, but... As a matter of fact, Mother, we're going back to town. Uh, I'm taking Laurie to a matinee. This afternoon? But, darling, you can't. Oh, but, but I have already... I mean, surely you haven't forgotten Dr. Marks. I made my major appointment myself. He is sick, Drew? Uh, he's a dentist. But that can oh. wait, Mother. You, you can call now, him. Now, isn't help... he terrible, Miss Ross? Honestly, I have to leave him around like a great big baby. Now, Mother, really, there's no reason oh, but, to go. Oh, but, we can do it. It'll be fun. Certainly, Drew. Miss Ross doesn't mind, I'm sure. Oh, of course not. We'll go to your dentist this afternoon. And take in the show tonight. But I... Oh, I can get off at the barbershop all right, Drew, and then we can eat together and everything. Oh, that sounds swell, Laurie. But you don't understand. Oh, sure I do, Mrs. Lancaster. I know Drew pretty well, too. You do? Like you say, you gotta lead him around like a big kid. <laughs> Golly, don't I know. This is the complete file on the girl, Mr. District Attorney. Uh -huh. I had my trustee collect everything he could get. I see. Uh, take this, will you please, Miss Miller? Right, Chief. Uh, the girl's name is Ross, Mrs. Lancaster. 
Lorelei Roth. Lorelei. She's apparently called Lori. A manicure, she said, Mrs. Lancaster, huh? It's all there in the report, Mr. Harrington. Yeah, My son met the girl in this barber shop. Yeah, I see. And after you met her, you had your trustee investigator, is that right? Walter Lambert, yes. Mm-hmm. He's been my trustee for years. Ever since my husband died, he's handled everything for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'll find the information accurate, all right. Well, yes, I don't question that, Mrs. Lancaster. But, uh, frankly, I'm not exactly clear on what you expect us to do. Do? Yes. Why, well, it's the most obvious thing I ever saw. Mm-hmm. This manicurist is deliberately trying to marry my son. Oh, first dough, huh? I beg your pardon? Yeah, oh, well, we've got to be practical, Mrs. Lancaster. <laughs> Everybody in town knows your son comes into $8 million pretty soon now. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Well, I remember seeing his picture when he got turned down by his draft board. Drew always had publicity, no matter how I tried to avoid it. Yes, well, I don't think you quite understand, Mrs. Lancaster. If you find this girl undesirable as an associate for your son, well, that's a matter for you and the boy. But I... As for any action against the girl, well, there's no complaint. She's committed no crime, Mrs. Lancaster. You admit that yourself. You don't think it's a crime to marry my boy for his money? Uh, Mrs. Lancaster. <laughs> yes? I'm sorry, Chief. Well, it's all I'm right. Not... Go right ahead, Miss Lancaster. Well, I just wonder if you're giving this girl a break, Mrs. Lancaster. Have you talked to her? Maybe she loves your son. Maybe he loves her. After all, we... I see. I see. Well, I sure don't. I've created the wrong impression here, haven't I? Oh, be honest. To you, I seem one of those awful society mothers. Nothing's good enough for my boy, that sort of thing. Well, this does strike me as unusual, Mrs. Lancaster. As Miss Miller has just pointed out... I'm not, you see. I'm not at all. I know this girl, and I know her game. Her game? Yes. I know this girl because I was this girl myself. Huh? Yes, it's true. I hooked Drew's father just exactly the way this kid's trying to hook him. Yeah, no kid. Well, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm ashamed afraid. of it. Oh, not to tell you. I'm not ashamed to admit it to the whole world. But I am ashamed to let it happen to my son. And believe me, it won't. Calm down, May. I've nothing but sherry here in the office. Would you care for some? Calm down? Walter, do you realize what this girl is trying to do? Yes. Her record's pretty obvious, isn't it? No family to speak of, batted around from one town to another. Quite a record with the police in Norfolk, apparently. Walter, she's got her hands on Drew. And what does he say? Oh, he won't even discuss it. He thinks she loves him. You pointed out to him that under the terms of his father's will, you turn over the trust to him in August? Of course. And he still thinks this Lorelei Ross isn't after his money. Her record and his trust, he can't add that up. Hmm? Would I have gone to the district attorney if he could? Now, May, dear. <sighs> yes? I've handled things for you for a long time. I wish you'd let me handle this Ross matter as well. But there's no question of you handling it, Walter. I'm sorry you went to the D.A., I know, I know. But when he defied me again this morning, when he walked out of the house to see her again, I I just didn't know what to do. Well, I do, May. From now on, let me handle this in my own way. Anything, Walter. Anything you want. First, I think I want you to call the DA. Call him? There's the phone. Call him and tell him to forget the entire incident. But I... I know what I'm doing, May. Call him, please. Now. Yes, I understand, Mrs. Lancaster. Yes, yes, I think that's wise of you. Well, these things often work themselves out. Yes, of course. No, no trouble at all. Thank you. Now what, Chief? Does she want the girl put on bread and water? Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Miller, Mrs. Lancaster has changed her mind. What? what? Yes, she's decided to do nothing, Harrington. Uh, well, what do you know about that? I know this about it, Miss Miller. She had that Ross girl pegged pretty good. Oh. Yeah, Chief, I uh, did a little checking up during the noon hour. Mm-hmm. This Laurie Ross has been bragging all over town about how she's hooked a millionaire kid. Oh, no. 
Well, from what I saw of Mrs. Lancaster, I'd say that the girl has her work cut out for her. <laughs> you can say that again, Chief. Just like she said in the office, she knows that game herself. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll admit I did admire her for saying it. Most women wouldn't. Well, Chief, I guess uh, we can forget about this one, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I'd be perfectly happy to forget about it, but there's one thing I can't forget. Yeah, what's that, Chief? Eight million dollars, Harrington. Sometimes that means trouble. You want the cuticle push back, mister? I always ask for some men don't like it. Oh, that's fine. Thank you, Laurie. Just the way they are. I'll just finish up now and say, how'd you know my name? One of the barbers tell you? No, I've Never been in this barber shop before. That's what I was thinking. My name is Lambert, Laurie. Walter Lambert. I'm trustee for the Drew Lancaster estate. Oh, you are. Will you listen to Don't me? Don't get excited, Laurie. Go on, finish my nails. We can talk here as well as any place. You can take your fingernails. Don't be not... foolish, Laurie. You don't want to lose your job here, do you? Listen, when I get through with Drew Lancaster, he and I'll be like that, see? This job. Your old man's mustache, Mr. Wise Guy. Going to marry him, Laurie? You're darn right I'm going to marry him. He loves me. And what do you love, kid? Drew or his eight million bucks? None of your... Now listen here. Keep your voice down. Without me, you haven't got a chance. Did you ever hear of a frame, kid? Did you ever hear of even innocent little girls getting framed right out of town? Why, you dirty... Remember Norfolk, Laurie? Ever lie to the probation officer down there? Ever think he might like to hear from you, Laurie? Norfolk. Uh Uh-huh. I know a lot about you. Wait a minute. Let me peg this. You handle the dough, huh? Why, sure. You got Mama hogtied, and in August, all that scratch goes to the kid. You're getting very smart, Laurie. And if Mama loses, so do you. Right? Right. Now, I'll talk. I can have you out of town in one hour, kid. And you know I can do it. Talk some more. But if we team up, if we handle this my way, we both get rich. Eight million rich? Oh, that's the neighborhood, Laurie. How'd you like to live there? I see what you mean, mister. <laughs> Morning, Drew. Is Mother with you, Walter? Why, no. Isn't she here? Here? She got your phone call about an hour ago. She went right into town. My phone call? Oh, but that's impossible. I was on my way out here. Are you drive? I didn't hear your car. I parked it down on the highway and walked across the lawn. Oh. My only chance for exercise these days, I'm afraid... I didn't know you went in for archery, too, Drew. Our mother's the expert. I was just fooling around. Here, you want to try? Oh, no, thanks. I don't need that much exercise. You're sure May went into town to see me? Hmm? Well, you know, Mother, she's always getting things mixed up. Uh, there's a bottle and some mix on that bench, Walter. You want a drink? Why, yes, I think I do. I'll get it, Drew. Yeah, help yourself. Huh? Good shot. Mix you one? Please. Have you seen much of Miss Ross lately? Don't start on it, Walter. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's your drink. Thanks. Here's to Miss Ross. Don't be coy, Walter. It doesn't suit you. You don't really believe I'm for you, do you, Drew? Any reason why I should? I know all about you, Walter. In the matter of Miss Ross, for instance... May's told me how you feel. Mother's always told you so much, Walter. That's been one of the mistakes. Oh, now that's a little harsh, isn't it? After all, I've kept your trust fund intact for you. Uh, Your mother's lived entirely on the income. Who are you kidding? Would you like another drink? Uh, No. No, thanks. That one seems to have 
hit me. Oh, the sun, probably. It is hot out here. I think I'll sit down. When you say handling the money was my job, Drew, you infer that look, I... look, Walter, if this is a plea, forget it. I'll be 21 soon, and when I am, I'll handle my own affairs. I see. Then you won't retain me, hmm? Never bothered to spare your feelings before, Walter. Why should I begin now? I, I think you're a crook. Oh, you're frank, Drew. I like you for that. Always frank. Very frank. Why, what's the matter? Aren't you feeling well, son? Uh, I'll be all right in a minute. Archer is too much for you, probably. It takes quite an arm to bend this bow. Mind if I try? Not so much. It's, it's easy. <laughs> Look at me. I can hardly pull this thing back. Funny, I, I feel so sick. You put I... the arrow in like this, don't you? Oh, I, I got to lie down a minute, Wooler. Uh, I'm dizzy. Put the arrow along the bow like this, don't you? Now, be careful how you point it. Hey, look out. Don't don't point that thing at me. I'll be careful, Drew. It's quite a pull, isn't it? Uh, there's nothing to it. What did you say, Drew? I, I, I said that there's nothing to it. Well, I... the reporters, Chief? They want a statement on your raid at the Five Juices Club. Yes, well, I'll be with them as soon as I can. All Smith. right. Did you put that gang through the lineup, Harrington? Yeah, all of them, Chief. The head waiter, the four guys we got running the tables, everybody. Yes, and? Well, it proves that we were right on one count, Chief. Nobody wanted them, so they must be from out of town. Get circulars out on all of them, will you please, Miss Spinner? Yes, sir. They're being prepared now. Well, I hope it's a good sign, Chief. The first joint on the list being a gambling outfit. Oh, I think our list is all right. What bothers me is the real head of it. These men we took in last night are obviously just employees. Yeah, that's right. I pegged that bum Parsons that way. The name Joe Parsons may be on the liquor license, but he sure don't own the place. Yes, exactly. Well, there's nothing to do but work down the list, then. We'll stage another raid tonight. I'll get a control sheet ready, Chief. Yes, please, Miss Miller. Now, anything else, Harrington? What? Oh, there's a dame showed up in the morgue this morning. Homicide. Oh, I meant to go down. Any story yet? No, I'm working on it. She was dumped out of a car out in the suburbs, shot once through the back of the head. Yes, I saw the examiner's report. Oh, there's lots of leads to go on, Chief. Fully dressed, handbag full of stuff. I'll know something in a couple of hours. All right, keep me informed, will you? Right. And stand by for tonight. We'll keep on raiding until we find the man we want. <laughs> He was a good kid, Walt. Oh, it's too bad. Well, here, Jim, you've got to settle down to work. Have you any idea what last night's raid on the five deuces cost well, me? she was just jealous. You can't blame her for that. Oh, stop it. This is big time. Losing that club will set me back $60,000 at least. Yes, and losing Parsons doesn't help me. You're going to let him take a fall? Parsons was paid to take risk, and at least he did his job. Meaning I'm not. Well, what about her? Has she said anything? Oh, I told you. She just doesn't talk about the D.A. I wonder if she could be wise. I don't see how. Oh, she doesn't make a phony move all the time I'm with her. You're not followed. Anything like that? <laughs> I'm not that dumb, Walt. I could spot a tail a mile away. We can't waste time any longer, Jim. Miller knows what clubs the D.A. intends to raid, and I must get that list. <laughs> Not from little clam up, you won't. Uh, when's your next date? Tonight. I paid one of the hairdressing kids five bucks to tell me your favorite movie star. So we're going to the movies. All right. Now listen to what I want you to do, Jim. It occurs to me now, perhaps we've been... Well, let's just say too gentle. <laughs> I don't 
see why you don't like him, Harrington. You haven't even met the man. I suppose he's a big shot in the stock market. Mr. Hubbard? Mm. Oh, I'd hardly say that. Well, you were just telling me he talks about the market all the time. Oh, Harrington, honestly. No, 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 Miss Miller, tell me more. Now, when you go to the Emerald Room... The head waiters all jump up at once. Uh, now, what else? I didn't say that. And what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. They bring a phone to his table. Boy, what a man of distinction. That's better than bringing you a bowl of pretzels at the Dutchman's. Yeah. For your information, Brenda, the Dutchman serves peanuts. Oh, why don't you stop? You haven't even met him. Please uh, give yeah. him... Oh. I'm sorry I'm late, Harry. Hi, hi, Any Chief. calls, Miss Miller? Uh... They're on your desk, Chief. Oh. oh, and your Christmas seals came. Good. Remind me to send a check tomorrow. Yes, sir. Harrington and I bought ours this noon. Yeah. Oh, that's something we never forget, those Christmas seals. Right. Oh, Chief, I got most of the story on that girl, the homicide in the morgue. Oh. Her name's Mitzi Page, mm-hmm. in case her apartment said, you know. I see. Anything promising? Well, nothing much from the neighbors. Oh, there's a boyfriend in it, I think. I took his picture off her dresser. Wait a second, I got it right here. Uh, that manila envelope, Harrington? Yeah. It's right here. Oh, open it, will you please, Miss Miller? Sure. Looks like a newcomer, Chief, or else he's just straight. That one, Miss yeah, Miller? I'll have it copied for you. Oh. Oh, no. What's the matter? Harrington, this, this picture, this was on the dead girl's dresser? Yeah, sure it was. Why? There's something the matter, Miss Miller? Well, Chief, this, this man... This is Jim Hubbard. Who? Why, I can't... Jim Hubbard, Harrington, my friend, the man I... Why, why I've got a date with him tonight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This man, this is the one you met at the charity bazaar? Why, I don't understand it, Chief. It's the same man. Mm. It it doesn't make sense. Oh, brother, this is something new. Miss Miller. I'm shocked, Uh, well, I mean, surely there's some explanation. Surely... Well, uh, wait a minute. Let's not be too well, hasty. I, I know, Suppose but... we just talk about this man a little. If you are willing, tell us just what you already know. Honestly, Jim... Uh, this is one of the craziest nights I've ever spent. I told you I had a surprise. Oh, my friend's upstairs. He'll be down in a minute. Uh, you are unpredictable. Oh? First we go to the Robert Montgomery picture, and after five minutes you want to leave. Oh, I'm funny that way. If I can't get interested, I walk out. Gee, we, we sure did. And then this uh, long ride out here of... Uh, Friend of yours lives here, you said? Yes, you'll like him. May I intrude? Oh, come in, Walt. We were waiting for you. Miss Miller? This is Walt. How do you do? Pleasure, Miss Miller. I had your car put around in bag, Jim, all right? Sure, sure, Walt. That's fine. We won't be leaving. We won't? Oh, well, my goodness. I ought to leave right now. I'm a working girl, you know. I have to get up in the morning. Yeah. Yes, Jim's told me of your work, Miss Miller. Oh, does the district attorney always have one of his men follow you in the evening? Follow me? <laughs> well, I don't know what you mean. Sure you do, Ken. Tonight. I must say he was easily lost, Miss Miller. Jim tells me you merely went into the movie theater by one door, left by another, and your shadow was gone. Now, really, I don't think this is very funny at all. Why would anyone follow me? I'll be happy to explain, Miss Miller. No, don't get up, please. (laughs) Because you're going to talk, little lady. And you're going to start right now. No, never mind. But tell him I want to see him the first thing in the morning. Right. Yes, and keep this line clear. I don't get it, Chief. You told Miss Miller to phone in by ten. It's after midnight. And I'm beginning to get it, Harrington. Hubbard knew he was being followed. Don't tell me. Oh, Chief. Yes, Brophy followed them to a movie theater, and he lost them shortly after they went in. Lost? Oh, I know it. I should have gone. I know it. No, it's not your fault. It's mine. But I certainly didn't think he'd expect to be shadowed. Yes, you were supposed to call in by ten. Yes, I know. I know. 
Harrington, where in the world has he taken that girl? I don't know anything. I don't. You're his secretary. I don't know anything. Please, please stop it. I don't know anything. Look in that humidor on the desk. I want some cigars. Cigars? Yes, cigars. Whole handful. Sure, sure, boy. Whatever you say. (laughs) Ever get burnt, Miss Miller? What? Anybody ever put out a cigar in that pretty face of yours? You're crazy. I tell you, I don't know anything. Except the list of gambling places, huh? Nothing but that list. I never heard of the list, believe me. There you are, Walt. Light one. Oh, oh, I'll light it. Sure, please. sure, Walt, right away. Please, won't you understand? I don't... Here, give it to me. Wait a second, William. We... i got to get it going. No. Press, Miss Miller. Rather no. tell me what places are on that list, would you? I don't know. Hurry, Jim. No, it's okay now, I guess. No, no. Here, thanks. Please don't. See the end, Miss Miller. No. See how it glows? I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. I don't know. Walt, who the... Oh, don't move. move. You boys Miller. take too long. Oh, Harry, the ice chief. Miss Miller. Don't move a muscle, sweethearts, because, brother, how right. I'd like to take a shot at you. Are you sure you're all right, Miss Miller? Yes. Now, wait a minute. Now, look. Quiet. Okay, chief. Okay, Harrington. Let's take this pair away. Our district attorney will return in just a moment to explain how he and Harrington found Miss Miller. But first, you know, there's at least one point on which a surprisingly large number of people agree. On which they say, that goes for me, too. Does Mr. Arnold agree? Yes, indeed. How about Mr. Murphy? Certainly. Mr. Bailey, too? Right again. Well, Fred, just what is it so many people agree on? That it's so easy to wake up now and then feeling dull and logy due to the need of a laxative. Yes, but it's also easy to take sal hepatica. And a sparkling glass of sal hepatica when you get up brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. That means you don't have to go through the day waiting until night to take a laxative. And another thing, if you're troubled with excess gastric acidity, let sal hepatica sweeten your stomach. Better keep a bottle of sal hepatica handy. Then any time you need a laxative, morning, noon, or night... See how much faster you feel better thanks to gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Now, here is your district attorney. I'd like to point out, first of all, ladies and gentlemen... That a gun found in Walter Montello's possession proved to be the weapon used against Mitzi Page. And that, confronted with this evidence, he made a full confession of the murder. Yeah, and his slick stooge, Chief. Yes, and Jim Hubbard, Harrington. And, of course, as a result of their arrest, we were successful in closing all of the gambling establishments he'd set up in the county. Gosh, Chief, I still feel terrible about it. To think I went out with that man. Well, you're hardly to blame, Miss Miller. Walter Montello was unusually clever. In fact, he made a study of you just to get Jim Hubbard into your good graces. You can have those graces. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Miss Miller. Oh, hey, Chief, why don't you explain just how we knew where they took her? Well, that was a chance we had to take, Harrington. When we realized you were gone, Miss Miller, Harrington and I tried to remember every word you'd said about Jim Hubbard. That's right. And I remembered you said he used a telephone at this nightclub. Yes. That's right. At the Emerald Room. Exactly. Fortunately, switchboard operators in hotels and nightclubs make a record of outgoing calls. It was fortunate, too, that they'd kept a record of Jim's call to Columbia 5027. Right. Because when you trace that number, it's Walt's house. And that's where we found you. Gee, am I glad you did. (laughs) Gee, what about next week? Well, ladies and gentlemen, for next week, we have another story in our continuous war against the underworld, a story of great dramatic excitement. It's the case of Death on Wax, and I invite you to join us for it. So until then, thank you, and good night. It's new. It's quick. 
It's Benex. B-E-N-E-X. The new brushless wonder shave that wilts your whiskers so they whisk off like... <laughs> Mr. Try Benex. See how the special beard softening formula actually makes your beard one-fifth water. Makes your whiskers so waterlogged they don't stand a chance against your razor. Result? <laughs> Quick, easy, comfortable shaves. Get Benex. B-E-N-E-X. Benex Brushless Shave Cream. of all characters in a night's dramatization are fictitious and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Bola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden. The program is produced and directed by Edward A. Byram and written by Robert Shaw. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Remember Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Bristol Myers, makers of Sal Hepatica and Vitalis, invite you to tune in again next Wednesday for Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.